Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to Growth Habits with Ngozi. Yeah, such a beautiful day. Such a beautiful day. How is everyone? How are we doing? How is everything? Trust we are all good. Ooh, who is here with me this beautiful afternoon? We are going to have a lot of fun today. Our topic for today is something that is... Wow! Let me just put it that way. Let me just put it that way. So who is here with me? This is Growth Habits with Ngozi. And I'm your personal guide on the journey of growth your personal guide on the journey of growth. We are here every Tuesday afternoon. 12 noon is the time. Every Tuesday afternoon we're here and we share on different elements of growth, different aspects of growth. So please let me know if you can hear me in the comment section as you join. Do let me know if you can hear me. I need to confirm that I am being heard. So please do let me know once you join. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me test something one minute. Okay, so um, we're back. Okay, so... Oh really really loud so I'm sure um, I can be heard I had to just test myself to be sure that I can be heard all right so who is here with me this afternoon who is ready to learn who is ready ready to learn something that's probably you've not um, known before something that you've not thought about before Today we are going to be talking about lifestyle medicine. We were supposed to talk about this some weeks back, but we had some issues with connecting um, our guest speaker, but um, he graciously accepted to come back today and deal with this topic and deal with it excellently. So um, let me just do a quick recap of what we've been doing so far, all the things we have done under this series of on health and wellness. Um, so we started um, with an introduction of health and wellness. We just did a quick introduction in the first session in this series and we checked what does health mean, what does wellness mean, what is all that about. And um, we agreed and we found out from World Health Organization that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This was what um, the World Health Organization described health as. And um, we also saw that they said that wellness is considered an active process through which people become aware of and make choices toward a more successful existence. So that was what the World Health Organization described health and wellness as. And you know, as we talk about growth, sometimes we forget that if we're not healthy, if we're not um, living um, a full life on this physical body, some, a lot of things will not be possible. A lot of things will be restricted unto us. So we need to be healthy. We need to um, have a life that um, covers every aspect, you know. So um, that was what we agreed in that first session. And um, we said that there are five basic pillars of health. And wellness. You know, this health and wellness covers you know, our mental health and our physical health, like you know, sickness and diseases. So we agree that there are five basic pillars to health and wellness. One is hydration. 
and for hydration just keep your body hydrated you know we, are, we know that the body is made up mostly of water a lot of fluids um, in the body the blood water all of them and we need to maintain a good and adequate level of hydration very very important very very key and um, you know there are different um, measures of how much hydration is enough but you know basically as I tell people just keep drinking before you have too much water is, is rare it happens once in a while but it's a rarity so just you know two liters three liters four if you can but just keep you so do you know one of the easiest ways to know if you're truly truly hydrated is when you go to ease yourself when you go to the bathroom the the and you uh we and you pee it's white there's hardly any yellow in it then you know that you're truly hydrated you know that you know you've you are taking enough water so you just keep doing it you just keep doing it so that is hydration the last time i showed us my water bottle that i keep with me most times and just keep drinking you know if um, water is a problem for you add some fruits to it but just keep drinking keep the water near you because if you have to walk maybe to the fridge to get the water you probably will not drink you know so keep it near you and keep drinking then we talked about nutrition eat the right foods you know there are, um, there are a lot of diets out there but you know I believe that most times when we just eat right we will lose weight that weight we, are, we will lose weight if we just eat right not and not keep weight loss as the aim if we keep the aim to be healthy you will lose weight so just eat the right foods don't cut off any food group truly don't cut off any friends say, oh I will not take carbohydrates you can reduce carbohydrates don't cut it off um, as I told us I think it was last week I spoke yeah when Kochifi was here she you know mentioned that if you have um, on, on your plate if 50% of your plate is vegetables then the other 25 percent is your protein then the other 25 percent is your carbohydrate you're good you're actually good so just don't ever say oh i will never eat this again keep it all you know portion control keep it to the minimum eat a lot of fruits eat a lot of vegetables take your proteins eat a little carbohydrate you will be good the next pillar is sleep. Many of us, you know, we struggle with getting eight hours of sleep. And some say it's not good to have full eight hours of sleep. You know, if you're sleeping eight hours, what are you doing? You know, how, what are you making of your life? There's a lot of things out there. There's a whole lot of things out there. But for me, it's more about the quality of your sleep. There are some people that will get eight hours of sleep and in that eight hours they only had like one or two hours of quality sleep you've wasted the rest of the six hours so ensure that you get quality sleep lie down as early as you can and truly sleep don't sleep and be thinking don't sleep and be solving problems you know i know people that in their sleep they are still solving problems that sleep you have not really slept well so quality over quantity for me quality over quantity ensure that you get quality sleep when you lie down truly relax and sleep then of course we talked about exercise which is the next pillar of, of um, health and wellness and 30 minutes work a day is good you don't have to go to the gym but if you can't get to the gym please do go to the gym if you can get to the gym but if not for whatever reasons 30 minutes walking walking that will not at least raise your heart rate a little you don't have to get to the part of panting you don't have to jog 30 minutes walking it's fine it's enough exercise if you can do it every day is enough exercise and then mindfulness 
Now this mindfulness is for your mental health and also for your physical health. Know that exercise also help, is also good for your mental health. Yes, exercise helps your mental health. Because as you're walking, especially the aspect of walking, it clears your mind. It has a way of clearing your mind and you can think differently. You can think better in that process. You know, they say when you exercise, it releases endorphins into your system that helps you feel happy. You know, this is science. It works. So also mindfulness. You know, be mindful of everything. Eat mindfully. Talk mindfully. Walk mindfully read mindfully you know the the one that i learned recently that i'm trying to really work on is eating mindfully so as i'm eating i'm just eating i'm not eating and pressing phone as much as possible i'm not eating and even watching tv as much as possible that one is more difficult to do but it's doable so eat and be conscious of what you're taking in Feel the taste of the food, really. See how this food you're eating tastes. Know the texture of the food. You enjoy food better. And it also helps you with your fullness cues when you eat mindfully. Because you actually know when you're full. When we wolf down food, we truly don't know when we're full. We just eat and eat and eat. And before you know it, you've actually eaten much more than you ought to. So mindfulness those are the five pillars of health and wellness and we took care of that in our session 35 when we just did an introduction of health and wellness okay so session 36 we talked about healing and we felt and we said that healing is promised to us as children of god once you're a child of god healing is your portion it's for you but if you don't know this you will not experience healing. That is one thing that I have discovered. The amount of light we let into our spirit becomes our experience. So if um, enough light about healing, you allow enough light about healing into your system, into your spirit, healing becomes your normal experience. It becomes your you know, natural. It becomes your natural life. So yes, um, it's a given. But if you don't know that it is given, if you don't receive it, it will not be made manifest in your life. That was our session 36. And we were supposed to have a guest that day, but once again, network did not allow him to um, join the, the live. So we're having him back next Tuesday. Uh, Dr. Val um, will be back next Tuesday to take up that session on healing once again and to handle it properly. Then our session 37 was supposed to be what we are doing today, lifestyle medicine with Dr. Dan on your And um, you know, I found a definition of lifestyle medicine that says that it's a branch of medicine focused on preventive health care. Preventive health care and self-care, dealing with prevention research, education, and treatment of disorders caused by lifestyle factors. You see, the way we live our life can cause some diseases for us. And lifestyle medicine is that branch of medicine that takes care of these things, that considers these things and, you know, finds solutions as much or offers solutions as uh, much as possible. It has to do with our behavior and how that affects our health and that are how it affects our wellness lifestyle medicine will still take care of that today because dr dan will be here this afternoon to talk to us okay so last week we had our session 38 and in that session we talked about healthy and sustainable weight loss you know and um we had kochifi that last week and Truly, she made us understand that if you concentrate on weight loss, most times you don't lose the weight. But if you concentrate on healthy living or fat loss and you work on that, the weight comes off almost by itself, you know. So she encouraged us to 
live healthy lives and to focus on losing fat and not just losing weight. You know, she was like, drop the scale. Don't even bother weighing yourself too much. But look at the other things that the other changes in your body as you go on this journey of weight loss. The other changes in your body will definitely show you that it's working and in time your weight will catch up. So um, she said um, that we should be careful what we get into our system. Be mindful of what you eat, what you take in. Be mindful of it. Be mindful of what you take in. Um, exercise is, um, and you know, what you take into your system is 80% of this weight loss, 80% of this healthy life, 80% of this fat loss that we are talking about, and then exercise accounts for just 20%. So be mindful of what you eat. Food can heal you, and food can also kill you. Food can do you a lot of harm. But food can also do you a lot of good. So be mindful of whatever it is that you're um, taking into your body. You know, there's a, a saying she always has, and, she, and that is, your body is not a dustbin. It's not. It's not a trash can. It's not everything just dropping there. Be mindful of what you take in. And um, she reminded us that you can't depend on motivation. If you are trying to live a healthy life, if you are trying to lose some weight, you can't depend on motivation. Just discipline is what will get you through. Because some days you wake up, there is no motivation. Zero motivation to exercise. Zero motivation to even eat the right food. Maybe the right food is not even easily available to you at that moment. But if you are... If you have disciplined yourself, if you have worked on your discipline, you will know the right things to eat. You will be able to, when motivation has gone to zero, discipline will carry you through to the next level. Okay, so that is a quick recap of all the things that we have done in this series on health and wellness. Yeah, those are the things that we have done. And as I told us today, we're going to talk about lifestyle medicine. We're going to bring in um, Dr. Dan Onetulem to talk to us about lifestyle medicine. Um, I'm tr I want to get to his profile. I will read his profile while we wait for him to join us this afternoon. Because truly, his profile is very long, if we remember. Because I also read it to us the last time. His profile is, wow. You know, there are a lot of things that he has achieved, with a lot of things that he has done. So, um, I'm going to read his profile. And as I read it, I'm expecting that he would join us um, very soon. So, Dr. Dan, Daniel, you will need to learn is an occupational health physician. Um, he attended, attended Methodist Primary School in Kano, where he obtained his first school living certificate, proceeded to the prestigious St. Thomas Senior Secondary School, also in Kano, where he had his SSCE. Um, he holds an MBBS degree from the prestigious Amadou Bello University, Zaria, obtained a degree in occupational health and safety management from the British Safety Council, as well as a diploma in occupational medicine in the Uni United Kingdom. Um, he had his MPH program at Federal University of Technology, Oweri, certificate in economic evaluation in global health, leadership and management in health and global health project management all from the University of Washington. He obtained his MBA from Enugu State University of Technology Business School and several certificate programs from John Hopkins University, United States of America. He's a fellow of the Institute of Health Insurance and Managed Care of Nigeria a member of board of fellows of the institute. You see, this 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 person is loaded 
is the Deputy Zonal Chairman, South South Institute of Health, Insurance and Managed Care of Nigeria, a vibrant member of ABU Alumni River State Branch, a member Nigerian Medical Association, Association of Nigerian Private Medical Practitioners, American Heart Association, American Society of Occupational Health Physicians, is a pioneer member of American Society of Improved Diagnosis to Diagnostic Errors in Medicine, a Nigerian delegation to a master class to Rwanda on community-based health insurance study and a health insurance practitioner with over 10 years experience. Um, I hope you can still hear me. I'm not seeing any reactions from anyone, so I want to believe we can still hear me. Uh, let me also check if Dr. Dan is here with us. Um, okay, I'm not seeing him yet. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing somebody's reaction. Thank you. I'm not seeing him yet, so um, let me go on and try and finish his profile. I want to believe that by the time I finish his profile, he would be here with us. Okay, okay, welcome, Moza. Thank you for confirming that I am loud and clear. Um, he's a recipient of several awards of excellence and a life member of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. Um, he's a peace ambassador and he participated and spoke and has spoken in several international conferences, including International Women Entrepreneurs in Paris, France. He has worked so many places, honestly, and he currently heads the board of F Duos Group and the principal trustee of Stevenson Holistic Care Foundation, an NGO with the United Nations Economic and Social Council accreditation. Um, he serves in the board of Synergy Wellcare Medicaid Limited as a managing director. He's the lead. Okay, he led Synergy to acquire national health insurance license. Um, he manages the offshore medical services of Deptwise Nigeria Limited and Aero Atlantic Nigeria Limited, amongst others. He's a conference speaker and a recipient of several awards. I can't even list out all the awards. There are so many. There are so many. I don't... Wow, I can't even, honestly, I can't finish his profile. It's long. It's long. It's long. He has done so many things and achieved so much. Achieved so much. Um, so, that is the person Dr. Dan is going to be speaking with us this afternoon. Um, I need to confirm if he has joined us. I need to confirm if he has joined us. Just give me a second. Let me reach out to him. Let's see um, if he's here. I can't see him in the live session yet. So let me call him and be sure that he's here.
Okay, sorry for that break in transmission. Yes, um, our special guest will join us in just a few minutes. I've confirmed with him. So he will be here in just a few minutes to talk about lifestyle medicine. As I told us, yes, um, the definition I gave to us of what lifestyle medicine is all about is basically talking about the medicine that deals with you know, the consequences of the way we live our life, honestly. That's the best way um, to describe it. And um, he will come up, you, I've read his profile, you can see that he's well versed and he's able to handle this topic very well because it's something that he basically handles every day, something that he deals with um, every day. Um, he just, as I spoke to him on the phone now, he just told me that they had an incident in his hospital. That is why he hadn't connected up till now. They had an incident, but I want to also use this opportunity to thank God that it did not, um, the incident is not, it didn't affect lives. There was actually a fire incident in his clinic, and so he couldn't, he had to quickly take care of that before he would join us, um, you know, good a thing. He's very safety conscious and they teach safety, you know, in his company and all that. So they were able to get it under control. And, you know, we know that also, as I go on before um, he comes up, lifestyle medicine also goes along with what we spoke about last week. Um, and that is the fact that the body heals itself if given the opportunity. The body heals itself by the things we take in, by the food that you know we eat. The body heals itself. You know, um, Kochifi said it last week. Food can heal you. A lot of things that we take medications for might not be necessary if we lived right, if we ate the right foods, if we you know did the right things with our body so the body heals itself but at the same time the things that we take in can cause us to have sicknesses can cause us to have diseases that you know may not be reversible you know may not be reversible so we need to be careful truly we need to ensure that the life that we live helps us to sustain this body to sustain our health, to sustain our well-being. We have to ensure that the life that we live, the things that we eat, the places that we go, you know, this sedentary lifestyle that we live most times, we are always seated and we never move around. The body was meant to move. It was made to move. So we have to be able to uh, move around. These are parts of the things that help us live long long lives uh, on this earth. These are part of the things that we would do that will help us, you know, live sustained and a good quality of life. So, um, let's, um, I always encourage people to the best of my ability, I always encourage people to live their best life, honestly. Don't wait for Okay. Don't wait until sickness comes. No. Don't wait until sickness comes. Try to live well now so that you will not get sick. Huh. Yes, yeah, so that you will not get sick. Because, I mean, yes, there are medicines now that are natural, but a lot of the medications are also you know, chemicals, and we wouldn't want so much of them in our body. So it's best for us to live right, to prevent sickness, which is what really lifestyle medicine is about, being able to live right to prevent sicknesses from coming in the first place. And even when they do come, our ability to um, live lives that will... Okay, our guest is here. Help us... Sorry, let me... All right that will help us also manage our health and manage our lives. So um, I think he's joining in a few minutes. He should be 
available. You know, sometimes this network takes a while, but I'm sure he will soon be here to soon connect and um, he will take up from where I stopped. So um, I'm still, let me keep talking anyway till he comes up. You know, um, I found out um, when I took my mom to the hospital this past um, few months, you know, she's, she's diabetic. Okay, uh, our guest is here. So uh, the doctor said something. She, she said that diabetes is reversible depending on how you live, on the things you eat. So you see there are a lot of sicknesses that we carry in our body. If we had lived right, we may not have them. So I want to welcome our guest for this afternoon, Dr. Dan Onyetulem. Welcome. I'm so glad that we could have you today. We are honored that you are here. Thank you. Thank you for accepting to share with us from your wealth of knowledge this afternoon. So um, I'm going to keep quiet for a few minutes and allow. I hope um, you can hear me, right? Very well, man. Very well. Uh, but I can't hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Hear me now. Okay, I can't hear you. I don't know. Can anybody else hear him? I don't know if it's only me, but I can't hear him. I don't know whether it's can hear from my you. end. Okay, let me check from. Let me go on. Okay, you can hear him. So it's only me that can't hear him. I wonder why. Okay, let me just see why I'm not hearing. But as long as every other person can hear him, I think I'm good. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now, man? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. 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 Yes, yes. Okay, so go ahead. Let me mute myself. You seem to have an echo, but let me mute myself. That might help. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Ma, for having me on board this afternoon. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I don't know, depending on wherever you're joining from. I want to thank uh, uh, our mommy, uh, Mrs. Omu Chiluba, for giving me this opportunity to share with us. My name is Daniel Onyetulem. I'm an occupational health physician, and we will be talking about uh, the pillars of healthy living or healthy lifestyle. Uh, when we talk about pillars of healthy lifestyle, we're talking about uh, going to the root causes of the disease and trying to eliminate the root cause of disease rather than the uh, approach of taking medication in order to stay healthy. Let me explain what I mean. Whenever there is fire, usually there's a fuel to that fire. And one of the fuel that fuels fire is oxygen. So, so long as the oxygen is there, the fire will continue to uh, get worse. But when you eliminate what fuels the fire, you quench the fire. So what we do in trying to take medication is just trying to quench the fire rather than removing what fuels the fire. So lifestyle medicine is akin to removing what fuels the fire. So we're talking about eliminating the root cause of diseases. And then when we talk about lifestyle medicine, it hinges on six pillars. But before we can go to that, go, go that level, I just want us to share a, a passage of the scripture. The book of Third John 1, 2, it says, Beloved, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So it's God's will that we remain in good health. And what is good health? The World Health Organization, WHO, defines health as a state of complete physical mental and social well-being of an individual and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Well, as Christians are added spiritual aspect because if we are well physically, mentally and socially and we are not well spiritually, we are not, it can be balanced. So there's also a spiritual aspect of uh, health. So 
in talking about the root causes of disease uh, when dealing with lifestyle medicine, there's a mnemonic I have. That mnemonic uh, talks about the six pillars. And uh, we will look at the D. D stands for diet and nutrition, what we put in. And when we talk about diet, depending on the food substance we take, whether it's carbohydrate, whether it's protein, whether it's fats and oil or mineral or vitamins, they all invariably end up as uh, carbohydrates. That's the end point of all the food substances. So irrespective of what we eat, but what is important when we talk about diet is, number one, you look at the colors. Whenever you dish your meal, look at the colors. If you can't see up to three colors, just know that that meal is not healthy. And what are those colors? Of course, it ranges. Uh, one might be green from the vegetable. It might be red from the pepper and other uh, 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 fruits. It can also be white. Of course, white must be there because most of us take a lot of carbohydrates. A lot of people take more of carbohydrate than other food substances. So when you dish your meal, look at the colors. If you don't see at least three colors, that meal is not a healthy diet. And then the quantity we eat, the time we eat also matters. I usually tell people about this uh, uh, acronym, eat your breakfast as a king, your lunch as a prince, and then your dinner as a pauper. What it means is that your breakfast can be as heavy as possible, you know, and then your, your lunch should not be as heavy as your breakfast. Now, the reason is because when you take your breakfast and you're off to work, by the time you get to work, the tendency is that you work actively from about 8 a.m. till about 12 noon, when you are about to go for your lunch break. And that's when you actively work. By the time you go for your lunch break, the tendency is that when you get back from your lunch break, your activities begins to wind down until the time you close from work and then you're going, going back home. That's why we say your lunch should not be as heavy as your breakfast. And then, of course, your dinner should be lighter and should come early enough. Your dinner should not be uh, late. It should come at least on or before uh, 7 p.m. If you attended a boarding house, you agree with me that you, we will take dinner by 6 p.m. <laughs> So let's make our dinner come early and then as light as possible. And then, of course, when we're growing older, there are certain uh, food substances we should avoid. You avoid too much of salt, avoid too, uh, sugar, and then avoid fatty substances. But for children who are growing, they can take uh, those food substances. I mean, they can take enough of that. But for adults, we need to be very, very, very cautious about what we eat. Then the next one is our, remember we talked about the uh, mnemonic the mnemonic is actually dreams so we've looked at diet so next we're looking at r r has to do with relationship so we need to build positive connections and relationship and i'd like to just share an experience i had my, my mom was in a particular uh, location you know with one of my siblings but then while she was there she had less of uh, contact with those she loved. She wasn't having uh, enough credit to call. And then she was, I mean, my sibling, she stays with her, her, her children were grown up. So she had nobody to, 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 to interact with. But I realized that my mom's health condition be began to deteriorate, you know, continuously until I brought her down to Port Harcourt. And I realized that the moment I brought her, I brought her down to Port Harcourt, where, where she had more connections with people she could talk with and relate with. And then, of course, I loaded her, I kept, I kept loading her phone with credit. So she, my mom can be from morning till about uh, 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 evening. All she does is to make sure she calls all her connections and get in touch with them, know that they are doing fine. And then my mom suddenly began to feel better and you know, that was how she miraculously got well, and she can walk from places. I mean, she's, she, she's, she, she's above 80, getting to 90 uh, years of age. So positive connection is so important that it helps us to stay healthy. By the time you are in touch with your loved ones, and then you get to talk with them, you get to interact with uh, 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 your connections, it helps us to stay healthy. In fact, a study was carried out 
among uh, some uh, senior citizens. This study was carried out in the U.S. And it was discovered, in fact, the study has been on for the past uh, about 120 years. So it was discovered that social connection was is one of the uh, 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 root cause of longevity. So social connection is so important that it impacts on our health. Let's connect socially, but more importantly, more importantly, positive social connections. Then the other mnemonic is E. E stands for exercise. A good exercise is an exercise that lasts for about 30 minutes. It can be brisk walking. You mustn't jog. You mustn't run. It can be a brisk walk or just taking a walk or the type of exercise that is befitting for an individual. Of course, there are certain exercises, exercises that may not be good for an individual, maybe if someone has an underlying medical condition. So exercise is a very good, uh, one of the uh, pillars that are, have been identified to impact on our health and helps us to stay healthy. Exercise, you know, is also important because a good exercise, like I said, exercise that lasts for up to 30 minutes also helps sharpen our focus. In fact, a study that was carried out among students, a section were exercising, another section were not. It was discovered that the students who were exercising were more brilliant than those who were not exercising. So exercise is so important, and a good exercise is an exercise that lasts for up to 30 minutes, and at least three times in a week. But the more frequent we exercise, the better for us. Like I said, it can be taking a walk. Yes. Many of us are so busy that we might not have time to go to the gym. If you have time to go to the gym, beautiful. But in case you do not have time to go to the gym, you can take a walk. Maybe you, you, you want to go to the market. You can decide to park your car and take a walk to the market if it's safe for you to walk. But let me share with you what I do. Most times, in fact, I registered for a gym. And I still have the receipt in my bag here, but I never had time to go to the gym. But please, if you have time to go to the gym, that's very good. But I never had time to go to the gym. But what I do is, when I wake up for my morning devotion, I, I don't kneel down or sit down to pray. I pray while I walk from one part of the room to another. So by the time I will have prayed for 30 minutes, I will have also had a 30 minutes uh, exercise, sort of. So or I stay in a place where I can swim, I love to swim. So you might need to find what works for you, but make sure you are exercising, and an exercise that lasts for 30 minutes and at least three times in a week. Then the other pillar, the other pillar apart from uh, exercise, we've looked at dreams. It's A, avoidance of toxic substances avoidance of toxic substances when we talk about toxic substances we're talking about things like alcohol consumption uh cigarette smoking and other toxic substances now those talk some of those especially alcohol and cigarette smoke they've been implicated in virtually all types of cancers so toxic substances are not good for us it is safer for us to avoid those toxic substances so that we don't become victims of uh, those toxic substances. Of course, they can trigger a lot of inflammation, chronic inflammation, which is where uh, the disease condition starts from. It starts from uh, uh, an inflammation that you know, uh, 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 progresses to a, a chronic inflammation and then can lead to all manner of things, depending on the, where the organ or the system where uh, such inflammation uh, originates from. So avoiding toxic substance can help us uh, stay healthy. And then the M, remember we said dreams. The M stands for mental well-being and stress management. For the fact that we dwell in uh, urban uh, community, in fact, that alone exposes us to a lot of stress. So, but the important thing is if you are passing through stress, depending on what kind of stress it is, locate or discover what it is that is a stressor. When you discover it, then the next thing is to try as much as possible to avoid, evade, or eliminate the stressor. And you can do that a number of ways. Some people might decide to park their cars and 
take a public transport to work rather than driving through the tra uh, uh, traffic. Some persons might decide to change their job if the job impacts on their health, but that's when you have an alternative. Please don't go and change your job if you don't have an alternative. And then you might also discover if your problem is communication, maybe you don't have good communication with your uh, people around you, your spouse, or, uh, you might need to uh, make sure you improve on your communication. Your communication should be two-way rather than unilateral. When your communication is not proper, it can lead to a lot of stress and uh, mental uh, 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 issues. So discover what the issue is and try as much as possible to address it. Uh, and then you, you, are, you are sure you're on your way to uh, positive uh, health. Uh, and then the S stands for sleep. Sleep is so important that I don't know if you've heard about uh, that if you want to those who take a nap, men who take a nap uh, for about 30 minutes, for about 10 to 30 minutes you know have the tendency of not having heart attack in 65 percent of cases so there's 65 percent non-chance of having heart attack in men that take a nap this i'm not talking about nighttime sleep the nighttime sleep has its own advantages the nighttime sleeps helps us to elaborate about four different hormones from the pineal gland in the pituitary gland. Now, those hormones, they do a couple of things. One of them is melanin. Melanin helps us to have a good sleep. And then the other hormone helps in rejuvenation. And then the other hormone helps us to retain a, 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 a retentive memory. If you watch students who have more students that have more hours of sleep, you know, have the tendency of doing better in the academic uh, pursuit than students that have less hours of sleep. So, and then the other thing the hormone does is mood change. It helps us to stay in a good mood. Of course, you agree with me that if you have, if you have a good sleep, the next morning you wake up, you know, from the right side of bed, and then you wake up feeling strong and, and, and elated and healthy and happy. So sleep is so important. And for adults, we should have at least seven to eight hours of sleep, nighttime sleep. For children, they should have more hours of sleep. That's why for children, when they get back to school, you know, many people who advocate, they take their siesta before uh, the, 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 the nighttime sleep. Of course, school should be more than that of the adults. So sleep is one of the uh, very important uh, uh, aspects of a uh, healthy lifestyle or uh, 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 the, the part of the dreams. I think we've looked at uh, the dreams. We've looked at diet. We've looked at the relationship. We've looked at exercise. We also looked at avoidance of toxic substances. We've looked at mental well-being, and we've looked at sleep. By the time we take care of all of this and imbibe it, in our day-to-day -day activities and be very intentional about it and make sure we do it consciously, then we are sure to impact positively on our health. But before I go, I wouldn't just stop here. I would like to share the story of a woman who, she was so uh, passionate about her family and then she was to have a medical check and then she ignored her medical check. And at the end of the day, she, 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 she had a condition, you know, that could have been salvaged if she had gone for a routine medical check earlier. What do I mean by that? General medical check, at least once in a year, is so important for every one of us. It helps us to find out in case there's any underlying medical condition that we might not see. Remember the definition of, uh, of, of health by the WHO. Apparent is an apparent definition and is a subjective definition but for us to actually find out if how healthy we are it's advisable that we go for 
a comprehensive medical check at least once in a year you know let me just share this story as, as i round up when I, I went for one of my program at john hopkins uh that was in 2011 after the program the night that preceded the day i came back home to nigeria we had a, it was a gala night and a lady who was looking she was looking six she was looking 45 she was actually 60 years of age she walked up to me and we started talking and then she raised her dress and showed me her a colostomy what we call colostomy bag and she told me she was diagnosed of colorectal cancer 10 years prior to that time i didn't show her how ignorant i was because all the cases of colorectal cancer that i saw as a medical student way back in Nigeria, when I, where I had my training at Amadu Bello University's area, we are all cases that, you know, they, they came at, uh, at a stage, at the terminal stage, where, you know, there was little or nothing that could be done for them. And then I now assume that all cancers were not curable. It was not until I met that woman, I realized that all cancers are curable. It depends on at what stage was it discovered. So she told me it was when she went for just routine check and then they discovered that she had precursor cancer cells and she had a surgery we called CAPA, synchronized combined abdominal perineal resection, where the rectum, the large intestine that opens to the anus were removed and implanted around the abdominal wall. And then they put a bag called colostomy bag. And the lady was consuming, she was eating pork. So, you know, that was the fascinating thing for me. She was eating pork. And she told me she could eat everything. And I didn't even show her how ignorant I was. But then she told me the story. She said she was diagnosed during routine check. And then she had that surgery. And she's completely okay. That, in fact, the last check she went, there were no traces of cancer cells. And she was completely healed. So, it is God's will that we all get healed and stay in good health. And it is possible but you and I have a role to play. Let me just end by telling us uh, a quote by a Ugandan professor. He said that health, good health is made in the home. Hospitals are meant for repairs. Thank you very much for listening. Wow, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Wow, good health is made in the home. Hospital is for repairs. Wow, but that is my biggest takeaway right now. Everything you said, and I try to uh, um, take note of all the things you said, but this last comment is is my big takeaway, and I hope it's also all our takeaway. Good health is made in the home. The hospital repairs. The hospital repairs. So let's let's make sure that we are making ourselves healthy from the house and not wait till it becomes a problem that the doctors need to amend to fix good health is made in the home thank you so much sir thank well, you thank you, thank you. Thank you. I, welcome, I know you are busy one and i know you had an emergency just before this um program and you still came on thank you thank you thank you so much i appreciate you i appreciate you um Okay, somebody said, if you feel that something is not right, do not bury your head in the sand, like blood in pool, weight loss, ache that is not going away. Get yourself checked. Cancer is curable if found early. And uh, this, I know this person is in the medical line also, when she, so her comment agrees with what you said. It, you know, normally when we hear cancer, especially in this part of the world, we just equate it to death. That, we conclude that this person is gone, no hope. But we can see that it is very much curable. What just and this also agrees with what our guest last week said: food heals, but food can also kill you. So you need to be sure of what you're taking in. Honestly, and then he mentioned colors on your plate. You know, most of us, our plate has one color at most. Most too, if we manage, we will get two colors on our plates. But the more colors on your plate, the better. Are we seeing how all these things are connecting? Our guest last week told us, let half your plate be vegetables. Different vegetables make up half your plate. Then your protein and your carbohydrate can make up the rest. If your plate looks like that, you see that all the colors are there. Every single color of the rainbow. 
is right on your plate. Wow, thank you once again. And um, I'm learning a lot from this my this series we're doing this month because I've had to um, adjust my um, diet recently because of a little issue with my knee and all that. And, you know, I never really realized how much what we take in affects us. I've always known about living a healthy life. We all hear it. And I've tried my best, or so I thought. But with this challenge that I had with my knee, I realized that even the little things, something like turmeric, taking turmeric relieves inflammation. I mean, <laughs> turmeric has been in my house for years. <laughs> and I, most times I'm like, no, 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 it colors my fingers, the yellow. It stains on my plate. Now I blend and drink turmeric and do not send anybody. <laughs> Let it color the leg. Let it color everywhere, you know? <laughs> so food heals. Food heals. Um, look, another comment. Yes, colors matters a lot and portion control. And as truly, like, you know, when you eat healthy, you will not be looking for weight loss. Weight loss will find you in the midst of eating healthy you will lose the weight and you won't look like you're sick in losing the weight mm -hmm. you know many of us just cut off carbohydrates and we want to lose weight in the end you look sick that is why so, so less food is really 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 medicine lifestyle the way we live our lives ensures that we live longer and ensure that the quality of our life is better. I hope we have learned a lot um, today and, and in this series. Yes, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I appreciate it, Dr. Dan. I appreciate everyone that joined. Ozo Okoli, Kelechi, Ume, um, Margaret Obona, so many of you um, that joined. Mazi Echika, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I appreciate having you. And um, please join us again next week, Tuesday. Uh, we're bringing back Dr. Val. He's also a doctor. You see that almost everybody that has spoken to us is either a doctor or a health practitioner. But Dr. Val, uh -huh, he will bring in the healing aspect. Now that's what he's going to talk about. In case you've already messed up everything, you've eaten wrongly, you've done the wrong things and sickness is inside the body now, what do we do? He will deal with that and talk about how healing um, can help us maintain a good life um, health-wise. Thank you all for joining me. Remember, to follow us on all our social media handles, TikTok, we're there, Growth Habits with Ungozi. Facebook here, we also have a group, Growth Habits with Ungozi. YouTube, Growth Habits with Ungozi. Fire everywhere, Instagram, follow us on all our social media handles. And remember that growth is a process in every aspect of life. It takes time, it doesn't happen automatically. And as you keep on, taking the steps necessary, you will definitely and you will surely grow. Thank you for joining us once again and see you next week. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Thank you. We appreciate you very much. Thank you, everyone. See you next week right here, 12 noon, Facebook Live, Growth Habits with Ngozi. Bye. Oh, yes, before I finish, if you're interested, you can see our branded shirts are coming out, Growth Habits. If you're interested, please let me know, and I will arrange for you to get your shirts. We'll soon have cups, um, we'll have diaries, everything. So just let me know, and we will arrange it for you. Thank you all very much, and see you next week. Ah, Tochuku, yes, I saw you. Please, I didn't call you. Thank you for joining me today. All right. Bye and see you next week.